Hello everybody, I am Dan Bigman. I am the GPR professor at LearnGPR.com and president of Bigman Geophysical, a consulting firm to help people using geophysics, non-destructive testing, materials testing, and things like that. Um, and this has been a video that is a long time coming. We had somebody ask uh, in the comments of one of the YouTube videos to do a video on what does resolution mean in ground penetrating radar work. And uh, this is a pretty complicated or long-winded type of uh, topic. And so I'm going to try to address it, and address it in, a, in a pretty short amount of time. Um, but a lot of times when you hear about resolution for GPR work, it's, uh, um, you know, what's the size of an object that can be identified with a GPR? There are a number of other pieces that I consider part of resolution. And this really includes the different planes of investigation or how you're looking at it. Is it vertical? What does vertical resolution mean? Um, right? What does horizontal resolution mean? What does horizontal resolution uh, 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 in different directions mean? So I'm going to try to address this in as a comprehensive but also summary way as possible. So I'll try to list a lot of things um, to tell you where I consider when I think resolution, what comes to my mind? Because it's not just what's the size of the target that the GPR can record a response from it actually plays into a bunch of different roles here. So GPR resolution. And a couple ways to think about it then. So first of all, we'll think about it in these terms, is uh, a horizontal res resolution. Okay, so we'll have, you know, uh, vertical and uh, horizontal. Okay, vertical versus horizontal. So horizontal. Here's your ground surface, and here's your GPR, and um, you know you have a, a, some sort of cart, GPR cart, if you will, and the cart right has an antenna on it, and this survey wheel over here, let's say, is what we consider your odometer, right? Okay? Your odometer. Odometer could also be your survey wheel or your encoder. It doesn't matter. You're pushing your system this way. Here's the question. How far does your system have to move for your antenna to put out another pulse? How far does it have to move? That's resolution number one, and we call this step rate. Okay, step rate. Step rate is... What's the distance between data points in this direction? Okay, maybe it's one centimeter, right? Maybe it's two centimeters, maybe it's five centimeters, maybe it's one meter. It'll depend on what you're searching for, okay? It'll depend on what you're searching for. If you're looking for bedrock, I don't know, maybe a meter is okay, uh, or more. Uh, if you're mapping the bottom of a glacier, I don't know, maybe 10 or 20 or 100 meters is okay. I'm not sure, I don't do that kind of work necessarily, but. Um, but if you're trying to find uh, rebar, right, it better be in the millimeters. So this is kind of uh, probably in the millimeters or centimeters. But that's, that's what we mean, right? How often is it going to put out another signal? That is what we call step rate. The second way to think of this uh, in terms of horizontal resolution is going to be uh, what I call transect interval. All right, transect interval. Transect interval means if we look top down, right, like an aerial photograph, okay, an aerial photograph, right, top down on your project site, and here's your project site, okay, this is your grid, and this is zero, and this is, you know, and this is 10 meters, okay, and then and so forth, and this would be, you know, 10, 10. Okay, so zero, zero, right, zero, 10, and then 10, zero. How close together are your transects going to be? Whether it's a formal grid or not, okay, it doesn't matter. But how close together will your transects be? Okay, are you going to go uh, every half meter? Or how about 
And we're going to go every 0.25 meters. I don't know. You're going to go every half meter, every meter, and so forth. So the closer you go, the higher the resolution. The further away you go from each of your transects, the lower the resolution. So you can go very tight here, right? If you went, a this may be a quarter meter or, so or something along those lines, where a half meter is only going to look like this. Okay? And a one meter is going to look like this. So that's the difference. It's how dense are the transects that you're collecting. To me, that's horizontal resolution. It plays a really important role. A lot of times what we'll see is if you're trying to locate a utility, for example, if your utility runs this direction, let me see if I have another color in here. Let's say your utility runs this direction. Half a meter or a meter spacing probably is gonna resolve this utility pretty well. However, what if your utility runs in this direction. The further out your transects are, the worse it's going to resolve that utility. And a lot of times what we'll have is non-interpolated spacing between the actual responses when you're hitting a utility or a linear object on an angle like that. It won't have, have no data interpolated if you have closer spacing, quarter meter, half meter, something like that. But if you have a meter spacing or more, you definitely will get, right, you'll get this hit, you'll get this hit over here. And what you might get then is when it plots, okay, you get a little response over here, okay, response over here, response over here. And you might be able to see the trend, but it may not interpolate across your entire space. So horizontal uh, resolution, public step rate and we're talking transect interval. Um, another uh, piece to horizontal resolution is actually going to be uh, um, spacing of targets. So, Here's your ground surface. Here's target one, target two, right? One, two. How far apart do these two have to be in order for your GPR to record two responses, right? One response and then two responses. If they're far enough apart, you'll get two different hyperbola peaks that you can segregate out and define as two separate responses. However, if they're too close, what may happen is that you get a single, right? instead of two hyperbola, like before, what you might get are overlapping responses. And you might get something along the lines of this. There'll be a broadened, it might be a broadened hyperbola. But how far apart do these have to be? That's another question for horizontal resolution. And generally, people kind of, in my investigations, and in my uh, 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 review of the literature, um, my understanding is about one half of a wavelength is how far they have to be apart minimum. One half of a wavelength to resolve both targets. Okay, so that's another, I guess, horizontal resolution. Okay, vertical resolution. Let's step into vertical resolution. Vertical resolution, number one, is wavelength. And this is really, oops, keep the colors consistent here. Okay, so this is really how large or small can your target be? for your GPR to record a response. Generally, from my readings, I found various uh, minimums. It's usually 0.1 to 0.25 of a wavelength. I generally teach this to be cautious, 
But I certainly would say that things can be one-tenth of a wavelength. I've seen that. I've used the 250 megahertz before and gotten responses, pretty good responses, off of rebar. Obviously, it's not, it wasn't the application that we used it for, as it was the wrong system. But we were mapping utilities and grade beams and all sorts of other stuff below a concrete slab. And so within that slab, there were rebar. We were able to see it with the 250. Like, that's possible. We wouldn't detect them that way. We wouldn't use a 250 megahertz antenna for it. Um, but obviously, if I can use a 250 and get a response, it's probably close to somewhere over here. The response we got were all overlapping because the wavelength was so long. But somewhere in here is what you're going to look for. Okay, 0.1 to 0.25 of a wavelength is going to be something that will help you resolve the size of a target. Okay, so um, if your wavelength is one meter, you're looking at something has to be probably at least... 10 centimeters to 25 centimeters to get a good response. So that's that's vertical number one. Uh, vertical number two. The ground, here's your GPR. Your GPR puts out a wave. That wave has to be digitized with a certain number of samples. Right? So we call this a sampling rate. And the sampling rate is how many points are going to be along your trace to reconstruct the waveform. Okay? How many samples are going to be along the trace to reconstruct the waveform? Some systems will automatically adjust it for you. Other systems give you a couple options. Other systems give you uh, open season and let you determine what you want. Um, but the longer your time window is, the more points you need to digitize this. To me, this has to do with resolution. Because if you don't digitize your wave or plot it with enough samples, you can actually remove responses. I'll give you an example. So let's say we're going to digitize this response, okay? Make the response like this. All right, so here's... Uh, uh, uh. Okay, here's the response, and over here we'll do it with um, 10, point, 10 samples, and here I'm going to do it with 3 samples, okay? 10 samples and 3 samples. So 10 samples. We're looking at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now I will connect the dots. That's pretty close. That's pretty close to what we have over here. Now it's not exact, but it's pretty close. What about three samples? One, two, three. Maybe you can see that there was something that occurred, but this is an inadequate number of samples to digitize this trace. So that's what I mean by resol vertical resolution, is having the appropriate number of samples to produce a full waveform or as full of a waveform as possible, to me, falls within this vertical uh, uh, resolution. So wavelength, uh, sampling rate in vertical, step rate, transect interval, and spacing of targets, uh, which again relates to wavelength in horizontal. Um, that's what I think about when I think about resolution. If I missed one, please put in the comments below what I missed. Oh, well, no. I, I will just make one little asterisk here. Uh, transect interval, right, is if you have a multi-channel system, you may be able to get that transect interval really tight. And if it's really tight, like for example, I don't know, four and a half centimeters in spacing per antenna, then you'll get a really high transect, you know, a really small transect interval, which is really high resolution. That's another, that's a big benefit of multi-channel systems. But this is what I have, okay? I have one, two, three, four, five. If you have something else, put it in the comments below. If I miss something, put it in the comments below. I missed something the other day in a video um, when I do a big benefit about air-coupled systems, and somebody said, here's another benefit. You might be able to go at highway speed and you don't have to worry about damaging your equipment and you get to benefit from safety because you don't have to worry about traffic. Super true. So 
help the community. I may have missed something. Please let us all know what I missed. If you found this useful, then let me know that you found it useful. Uh, how have you defined resolution as it relates to GPR in the, in, in the past, in your career? Um, I'd let me know about that below. So hit the subscribe button. Please help me continue to grow the community. Uh, really the number one you know, community channel on, on uh, uh, the internet that's related to giving quality content to uh, the user base of ground penetrating radar and other non-destructive testing in geophysics. Um, so please subscribe. Hit the like button if you found that this was a useful, helpful summary of how to think about resolution. And, um, and please share this around with a friend. Go to learngpr.com. You can put your name and email address in. We'll send you videos like this every single week. And we'll also give you access to our free introductory training uh, webinar. So thank you so much. I wish you nothing but the best.